Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. It's time for the monthly Q&A. So apologize in advance to everyone whose names I will butcher throughout this video. Today we will cover some interesting questions asked by our community members. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Gui Hua Cha. Gui Hua means Osmanthus fragrance. Cha means tea. Gui Hua Cha is a tea processed by adding Osmanthus fragrance, flowers from the Osmanthus tree. As mentioned in prior videos, most Chinese tea drinkers appreciate pure tea. Tea is produced only with tea leaves instead of adding other ingredients such as flowers. However, some teas produced by adding flowers to strengthen and modify tea flavors are popular as well. Younger ladies very often prefer drinking such blended teas instead of pure tea, so it is worth introducing this tea in today's video. Among many others, the two most popular flowers used in modifying tea are jasmine and uh, osmanthus. It may seem as if adding flowers to tea is a new practice. Actually, it has been done for about a thousand years now. Ancient tea books contain a proverb describing tea with flowers called Cha Yan Hua Xiang Yi Yi Cha Wei. Translation Let tea carry the flower fragrance so that the tea flavor will be strengthened. End translation. However, due to the limitation of a flower supply in history, this type of tea had not been popular until the last century. Developments in agricultural technology in the last century led to a drastic increase in flower cultivation for use in blended teas. Gui Hua Cha production involves a special process to mix flowers with tea such that the tea leaves absorb the flower fragrance. For example, tea leaves are heated so that the high temperature and the lower moisture level of the tea leaves helps the absorb the flower fragrance more effectively. To maximize the flower flavor, the flower quantity used should be at least 10% by weight of the tea leaves in the processing method. Some high-end teas need a higher percentage of the flowers in tea. So, the tea leaf processing method, especially the temperature and the timing are important in the production of Gui Hua Cha. It is worth noting that traditionally, flowers are picked out of the tea leaves after their fragrance has been assimilated by the leaves during the processing method. However, sometimes a few flowers are left in purely for the sake of visual appeal. Gui Hua Cha provides many health benefits. Very often, most of the man's flowers are left in the tea instead of getting picked out in the case of uh, jasmine tea. So, tea drinkers can directly benefit from it. Besides the benefits offered by the tea leaves themselves, Osmanthus fragrance can boost the immune system and soothe the soreness in the throat, among other health benefits. A side note, many tea drinkers do not like flower teas. Teas processed by adding flowers. A common belief is that flower tea is used only to change the water flavor since some areas in the old days did not have a good quality drinking water. So, flower teas were used for covering up poor water quality. That story may have worked in the old days 
But now there are many people who like to drink flower tea for various reasons, improving water quality not being one of them. In China, most of the Manzas tea is produced in many regions such as Guilin in Guangxi province, Xianning in Hubei province, Chengdu in Sichuan province, and so on. I have some uh, delicious Osmanthus tea given by my students Le Hong Marin. This tea uh, is uh, from Guilin. <laughs> there are many Osmanthus flowers in this tea, giving it a strong flowery fragrance. This is the tea decoction. Gui Hua Cha is the best brewed with 100 degrees Celsius water in order to extract the flower fragrance to the water. Normally, the brewing time should be more than one minute. Some people prefer to add honey to the tea. I think it's a good idea. Since flowers have already been added to the tea, why not add some honey to improve the flavor? Again, Flower tea isn't for everyone. If you like flower tea, then Osmatis tea is a good option for you. So, I hope you will enjoy this tea. Do let me know your experiences in the comments. Which site? Let's get on with our Q&A. Questions covered in today's video include First, Doug Duke, Traveling Martial Artist Next, Mark Anna Maria Natural stretching in Xing Yi. Next, Steely Blue. Qi Chen Dan Tian in Tai Chi. Next, One Direction. Palm Changes in Bagua. Next, Simone Cavazzoli. Two Persons Practice. Next, Reno Unhindered. Online Learning. Next, Janice Cressina. First, Doused diet for weight loss. Second, sitting posture for Xiu Dao. Next, Bei Feng Dao Ren, eight animals in Bagua. Next, Bei Feng Dao Ren, uh, wrist covering in Bagua. Next, Ian Barker, rooting, sinking, and rising in Tai Chi. Finally, offer JRL, Ming Men and Jin. So, without any further ado, let's Get started. Dark Wendok asks three martial art culture related questions. I found them interesting and I'd like to answer them one by one. He says, quote, There are stories about martial artists traveling around to improve their martial artists. So, his first question, quote, First, what about the funding and the accommodation of those travel travels? I don't think it's cheap to travel around, but did they travel like uh, vagrants or brought tents like modern camping, hunting for food, etc. End quote. This is a very good question. Actually, many martial artists have experience traveling to different regions to visit other practitioners in order to improve their knowledge and experiences. I have traveled to most of the major cities in China to visit martial artists of different styles, and I still do so every time I visit China. First of all, you need to have the financial resources to support your trip, and that was the case even in old days. There was no such practice of living in tent like in modern camping. You need to have saved enough money before any trip. Very often, other people would host you when you arrived at their place if you deserved their hospitality. That still occurs today, though not on the scale as before. But back in the old days, there used to be such a tradition that the host would take care of certain expenses when receiving reputable visitors. In older days, due to the lack of a modern transportation method, 
traveling took a lot more effort, but martial artists had the means to manage their trips. A centuries old popular proverb in China goes, quote, Qiong Wen Fu Wu. Translation If you are poor, study literature. If you are rich, study martial art. End translation. Of course, it would be ideal to be rich and be able to focus on both literature and martial art, or neng wen neng wu, to be able to work on both literature and martial practice. Again, sufficient financial resources are a must before visiting any martial artist in different cities. That was the case before, now, and also in the future. Here's the second question. Quote, How did they train during those travel, travels? Did they train on the side of the road, or did they search for an empty place in the morning or late at the night when they are resting, or did they stop training at all? End quote. Well, being able to visit the people to improve your skills means that you are already at an advanced level, or else it's not considered a visit. So, as anyone at an advanced level, a practitioner can practice whatever, whenever, and wherever necessary without being restricted by time, space, and schedule. There's plenty of space no matter where you go if you want to practice, since you can practice anywhere. His third question, quote, What did they do actually? Did they go around challenging martial artists in various places? Did they encounter any trouble because of it, maybe due to local authorities or local gangsters? End quote. It is a friendly exchange of a practice the most of the time. The exchange should be worth the effort since it used to take a lot of effort to travel in order to improve one's practice. So, learning something new and being able to exchange knowledge is normally the objective. It is not about fighting with someone most of the time. Of course, many martial art movies talk about fighting scenes on a trip, but those are just movies, not reality. Friendly communication and exchange of practice would have never attracted any unnecessary attention from authorities in history. Again, martial artists' visit to each other was not about fighting, or else they would be risking their lives. Dr. Duke, I hope I have answered your questions. Let's move on to the next one. Marco Anna Maria asks about natural stretching in Xing Yi single movement video. Quote, Could you please elaborate on that? How it is different from stretching in other internal cells and whether that method or elements of it might be useful for people practicing Tai Chi. End quote. This is a good question. A natural stretching method in Xing Yi is the practice aiming to improve flexibility, but its movements are taken from forms and routines of the style, especially some 12 animal movements that are appropriate for this purpose. Xing Yi movements can be used to practice Tai Chi stretching, but Tai Chi has its own stretching exercises. So, it is not necessary to apply the Xing Yi movement to Tai Chi practice. As for your recommendation, quote, if you would consider making a video about stretching method, exercise, considering a general theoretical background, I would really appreciate that. End quote. Well, I'm currently working on the theoretical aspect of the internal styles, so I feel it is not the right time to work on teaching specific movements. By the way, I have two videos on this channel covering this topic. The first video is titled Decoding Martial Art Proverbs for Extending Tendon, Pulling Bones, and Bow Arrow. 
The second video is uh, titled Internal Style Concept 13 Opening Hips, Shoulders and Rib Cage. Links are in the description. Marco Anna Maria, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Stanley Blue asks about the possibility of fully integrating Qi Chen Dan Tian or sync the Qi to the Dan Tian at all times while performing Tai Chi and other martial art styles. Thank you, Steel Blue. First of all, I hope I understood your question correctly. If not, please feel free to follow up. Qi Chen Dan Tian or Sync Qi to the Dan Tian actually is a popular expression which says that the energy should sink to the Dan Tian area. Of course, it is a good expression since it reflects the fundamental Chinese martial art practice in terms of Dan Tian and its relationship with energy. However, that is only a part of the whole practice. We sink the energy into the Dan Tian in order to maintain a balance and relax the body, mind, and spirit. However, in practice, especially in martial application situations, sinking energy to Dan Tian is not enough in terms of executing martial movements. So, you should be able to apply energy to the right place at the right time. Only sinking energy to Dan Tian without being able to use it in a self defense situation will only get you some of the benefits. So, sinking energy to Dan Tian and being able to use it externally is equally important in practice. Stanley Blue, I hope I answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. One direction recommends me to explain single palm change and double palm change without mentioning a specific question, so I'd like to give a brief answer for him. Single changing palm or Dan Huan Zhang focuses on energy change to one direction while double changing palm or Shuang Huan Zhang practices two opposing energies in a form such as left and right upward and downward, opening and closing, and so on. Traditionally, single double palms are the two most important practices of any style of Bagua since they are the foundation of the other six big palms. I hope I have answered your question, let's move on to the next one. Simone Cavazzoli Ask about two person practice in developing martial skills. The question is quote, Do you suggest any specific single movements to be practiced with a partner to improve self defense? For example, in Tai Chi, should we just choose some single movements from the routine and practice them sim simulating attack defense situations? Concerning Xing Yi, what about practicing opposite elements, um, for example, fire, water, um, soil, wood, with a partner? End quote. Yes, it's better to have a practice partner to practice all the movements in order to understand each of the applications. However, it may take a lot of time and energy to do so. So, another alternative is to focus on the main movements of each form and the routine and then work on them with the training partner. Again, every small form has the most important movements. So, please figure out what that is and then work on it one by one. That is a quick way to master this part. By the way, I have some application teaching videos on this channel which I uploaded many years ago. Please have a look when you have time. I hope I have answered your questions. Let's move on to the next one. Reno and Hinder ask an interesting question about online learning. The question is quote, Is it possible to learn soft martial arts like Bagua or Tai Chi from an online course or online classes? 
What's your experience of teaching students during COVID? Pros and cons. What should a student look out for while taking lessons from an online instructor? This is a good question and I'd like to share my opinion. I believe that online learning is a great way to practice nowadays. It became very popular in the last three years. I have been teaching online for three years now. However, I have not accepted any new students since I started teaching online. The reason is very simple. Teaching a new student is different from teaching current students who have worked with me for years. In the past three years of online teaching, I have accumulated enough experience and hopefully I will accept new online students in the future. Speaking from personal experience, online teaching can be a lot more challenging than in-person teaching. The learning experience between online and in-person may also not be the same. However, if in-person teaching is not available, then online teaching can be a good alternative. Also, I strongly believe that the learning experience, no matter online or in-person, heavily depends on the knowledge and the teaching experience of the teacher. For example, if the teacher cannot practice well to begin with, then the teaching format will make no difference. I have seen some online martial arts teaching commercials during the last three years, and I cannot give any comments when some people ask about my opinion of it. Normally, I only comment on good practice and avoid commenting where I don't have anything good to say. I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Jenny uh, Christina asked a very interesting question about Taoist diet in terms of weight control. Quote, I don't know if there is a Taoist approach toward weight loss, but I was wondering if there is any technique suggested toward that target, such as reducing the appetite of, or speeding the metabolism by riding the inner fire as for the five elements. I think it's a long short, but on the other hand, there are anecdotal reports of adults sometimes eating large amounts of food and some other times not, which I guess was related to their practice at the time, end the code. This is a very interesting question. I'd like to give a brief answer here and uh, I will make a dedicated video later on this topic. In Taoist literature, there is uh, no such term for weight loss at all. However, there are many practices that can result in weight loss. One of the popular methods is the Bi Gu. B means to avoid, Gu means grains or food. Put together, Bi Gu is an ancient practice that aims to eat less or stop eating for a certain amount of time, let's say a few days in order to focus on certain practices at specific times. The origin of Bi Gu can vary depending on each school. A popular explanation is that in ancient times, some Taoist practitioners had to live in remote places with sparse or irregular food supplies. In order to eat less, Bi Gu became a necessary approach to daily life. And of course, there are many benefits to practicing Bi Gu even today. Also, Bi Gu is a series of practices involving many specific steps. It does not mean to just stop eating your daily food all of a sudden. Again, in ancient times, there was no such concept of metabolism or other such modern terms. I practiced Bi Gu regularly before and I noticed the benefits. Now, I only practice Bi Gu once in a while since I'm already careful with my diet. 
In ancient times, it was important to observe many measures such as eating some specific food before and during Bi Gu period. There are many formulas in ancient Tao's document. For example, this book, Yun Ji Qi Qian, edited about 1000 years ago, introduces a lot of ancient method. Janice, I hope I have answered your question. Thank you for this interesting question. Let's move on to the next one. Janice Christina asked two questions about the Xiu Dao. I'd only ask, answer the first one in today's video and uh, answer his uh, second question in a dedicated video in the future. His uh, first question called, Why is always suggested a sitting posture during practice and uh, not lying down when, for example, one be aware of uh, Dantian? End quote. Good question. Yes, when talking about Xiu Dao, a sitting posture is commonly recommended. Actually, in Xiu Dao practice, many postures are used including lying down as you mentioned in your question. The reason why the sitting posture is the most popular one is that the posture helps a practitioner relax for a long time. So, as long as you can relax your body and your mind, any posture is suitable for Xiu Dao practice. Xiu Dao practice is about energy refinement, not physical posture. Jenny Christina, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next topic. Bei Feng Dao Ren asked two questions about Ba Gua and Xing Yi. His first question called, regarding Ba Gua, who created eight animal Ba Gua and do all families use the same set? End quote. Thank you, Bei Feng Dao Ren. Well, according to research, almost all Bagua branches use the eight animal to describe the eight palms. However, integrating the eight animal concept into each big palm actually started with Sun Lu Tang. In other words, even though other styles used some animal names to describe their practice, Sun Lu Tang was the first person to describe each specific palm with the eight animals. Also, many Bagua branches use a different set of animals. Check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 44, Bagua 3 Imagery and 3 Motion, San Xing San <coughs> Shi. Link is in the description. Bei Feng Dao Ren's second question called Regarding Xing Yi, there are several movements like in Ji Xing Si Ba O Ba Shi Quan, there was the research is covered. What is the meaning of it? End quote. This is the specific technique related question. The covering hand, normally the left hand is used to block the incoming attack. At the same time, the right hand is used to strike forward to the opponent. In practice, it is not necessary to add a lot of downward force on the left hand. Of course, there are other applications of this movement as well, such as locking techniques. Bei Feng Dao Ren, I hope I have answered your questions. Ian Barker asks about Tai Chi practice. Quote, Can you explain the difference between rooting, thinking, and rising energy and an example of how they are used in any Tai Chi single movements. End quote. Very good question indeed. Let's explain these words one by one first. Rooting in martial art means a solid and strong stance, especially strong leg work. Sinking means downward energy motion, while rising means upward energy motion. So, in any Tai Chi style, rooting is the fundamental concept and the practice. Tai Chi emphasizes a solid stance, so rooting is the term used to describe it. Sinking and rising are two terms used to express the Tai Chi energy's vertical motions, upward and downward. Unfortunately, rooting in the Tai Chi community has been overemphasized, and as a result, 
Tai Chi practice has become a very static one on average. A huge mistake indeed. On the other hand, rising and sinking are commonly neglected terms. Especially rising since people mistakenly correlate sinking to relaxation but totally ignored rising. So, in any Tai Chi movement, these three terms representing three types of energy motions should be included, or else Tai Chi single movement would be incomplete. Ian, I hope I have answered your question. Let's look at the final question for today. Offer JRL asked about Ming Men, quote, Can you elaborate on the connection between the Ming Men and the storing Jin in the bike before Fa it? One, one needs or decide. Does one store Jin mainly on the lower bike or everywhere on the bike? End quote. This is a very interesting question. Before answering this question, let me first explain what Ming Men is. Ming Men consists of two characters. Min means life, Men means gate. A very popular translation of Ming Men is vital gate. <coughs> this term is the Chinese medicine term and first documented in the first Chinese medicine book. Huang Di Nei Jing, or Inner Canon of the Yellow Emperor. In China, anyone who studies TCM must read this book first, since this book has been setting up the fundamentals of a TCM practice for thousands of years now. Now, where are the Ming Men located? Well, there are different descriptions of it. First, right kidney is a Ming Men. Second, both kidneys are Ming Men. Third, space between the two kidneys is a Ming Men. Fourth, functions of the kidney is a Ming Men. Here, Ming Men is not a location but a function and other definitions. As I mentioned before, Chinese martial art practice very often borrows terms from TCM for describing a specific body area. Ming Men is one such term used to describe the lower bike area. Now, let's look at the second part of your question about Jin and its storage place. Again, to answer this question, we first have to explain what Jin is in Chinese martial art. The term Jin has nothing to do with Ming Men. The term associated with the Ming Men is the Jing. Jing is also borrowed from TCM, which commonly means substantial materials in the body used to support human life. So, both tangible and intangible substances can be considered Jing. However, in martial art practice, Jing means power. In some old documents, Jing equals power or Jin. So, Jin means power or force, a term derived from Jing, and Jing is related to Ming Men. We cannot store Jin or power. We can only release power using both force and speed. I suspect you were asking about Jing, which according to the TCM concept, is managed by Ming Men. I hope I have answered your question. Thank you all for JRL. Those were all the questions for today. Thank you all for your questions and hope you found my answers worthwhile. As always, please feel free to ask follow up or enter new questions. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.